welcome to the American Cryptid and Paranormal Society podcast. This is an organic podcast discussing the topics beyond the fringe of this or any other reality. On this podcast, we explore cryptids, cryptonology, paranormal activity, lost legends, aliens, government conspiracies, historic mysteries, lost treasures, forbidden archaeology, and the edge of reality. I am the Cryptid Guy, and with me as always is my co-host, Daniel Tiny Hurst. Tiny, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. How about you, man? I am alive and kicking despite all uh, other references to my lifestyle. Thank you for asking. <laughs> yeah, it's been uh, it's been an interesting trek lately for both of us. Haven't oh, it? yeah. It's been a while since we put a podcast out, and uh, for that we apologize. But the truth is, my friends, we have been inundated uh, with life. I think that's the best way to explain that. Yes. Uh, I myself have been going through a lot of uh, family issues and things like that. And uh, when it's all over, I'll be more than happy to discuss and talk about it. But uh, I just want to say uh, for the record that the fact that I can do this show uh, with you and the fact that we have uh, listeners that are very loyal and, and send us questions and comments and, and ideas uh, helps my day more than anyone could ever know. And I just want to be uh, very thankful for that. And I appreciate everyone. And on top of that, we've got the holiday season right around the corner. What, we got Christmas in two weeks? Yeah. Two weeks. God, it's going so this year is fast. Flown by. Anyway, tonight, we're going to be talking about something Tiny and I discuss all the time. And uh, we're going to do a little a different kind of a, a setup tonight. Tiny and I are going to be discussing the Mandela Effect. I feel like we're a little bit late to the uh, train on this one. But but, late to the patty. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, better late than never, right? Well, plus we'll put our spin on it. We'll yeah. put the American cryptid and paranormal spin on it. Absolutely. Uh, and the thing of the matter is, is, you know, I always I always kind of thought it was ridiculous. And then, believe it or not, after talking to Tiny, you know, about this kind of thing, I started thinking a little bit. And some of this stuff... Uh, it just makes sense. And then, you know, let's talk about let's just it, talk bring the elephant in the room. Let's it, talk about CERN. It's it's one of those yeah. one of those things that once you go down that rabbit hole and it is a very deep rabbit hole. Um pretty sure I've passed Alice a couple times. Yeah. Um but once you go down it it, it almost makes sense. Uh it would explain a lot of oddities that are going on right now. And, you know, it, it goes back to CERN. Um, right. And I'm sure there's people out there that have probably researched it much deeper than we have. But, yeah. you know, CERN, when they fired up, and I remember the first time they fired up, they had an incident because of a squirrel. Was it a squirrel or a chipmunk or something like that? I remember yeah. a squirrel. And there, that actually leads us right into the exactly. whole Mandela effect. I'm pretty well convinced um, that you and I are from slightly different timelines. It would not surprise me. It does remind me the first time I met you, though. What was the first thing I ever said to you? Do you remember? Uh, no, don't remind me. I said, somehow you and I are going to screw up or fix the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, maybe both. Maybe That's... both. <laughs> but We'll just keep going until we get it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, just as humans and just with, our nature, we mess with stuff that we probably shouldn't mess with. And I think CERN's a prime example of that. And they just fired it up a second time, like, I think it's been maybe a month ago now. You know, Tiny, the truth of the matter is, I don't think anyone really knows what the hell CERN's doing. I just, I know they're trying to find different, you know, elements and and, and do atom smashing and creating things. But the truth of the matter is, I think they just keep making black holes and changing the timeline. Now that once you start accepting, adopting, and applying this theory as a possibility... And you start thinking about things. And, and the, the cool thing about this is everyone remembers things differently than, than what they really happen. And, you know, mm -hmm. as someone, both of us are pretty good in psych. Uh, we've studied that quite a long time. That's usually, you know, things are remembered differently, but not this different. Not the effect yeah. where everyone remembers something different than what it truly was. Yeah. And what we're going to do is Tiny has taken the time out to put uh, some examples up. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about them and how we remember them originally. Mm -hmm. And in true um, American cryptid and paranormal podcast style, we have jumped way ahead. And uh, we As, forgot to explain 
you know, CERN, when they had the squirrel incident, which leads me to remember the squirrel in Ice Age. Maybe they were trying to tell us something. Um, <laughs> when, <laughs> when the incident happened, the belief is that they shifted us a reality. And, you know, for those out there that, that buy into alternate reality, string theory, things like that, we're very, very close to proving string theory anyway. Um, I'm personally a firm believer in the multiverse theory, things like that. And the more that I investigate the paranormal, the more that I think a lot of those paranormal events are actually um, universal breakthrough. I guess would be a term. You mean you the veil use. between dimensions getting yeah. broken? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I could see that. And, you know, that could lead into different things with time and space and, I mean, infinite possibilities. And, of course, you know, not all of those paranormal experiences are that, of course. I still believe in the paranormal, traditionally speaking, but I think there's a lot going on that we don't understand. And probably will never have the capacity to understand. Well, I think that's the thing. It's like the capacity to understand. I mean, we can sit here and pretend we understand. Like, all all physics are theoretical. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know that. I mean, even even real high-end math is theoretical. That's the word right there. It's theoretically. It's theory. Yeah. We can't prove it. Yeah. But I think that's a human being's attempt to understand the, the universe and creation around him. That said, do we have the capacity? Do we actually have the brain capacity to understand multidimensional travel breakthroughs, theories, string theory. I mean, maybe a millionth of the percentage of the planet could, yeah. you know, but the problem is, is what do you do with it when you crack that code? Yeah. You, you know? know, I had a thought coming over. Um, we, uh, by the way, we have a, a better setup now to record. I yeah. hope that's the clarity of the audio is much better than on the phone. And the computer looks a lot better. We're actually sitting here together uh, for a change instead of on the phone. But I had a thought coming over here and, you know, I was thinking about as researchers, you know, we're always looking for proof, right? Mm -hmm. And we try really hard to find quote unquote scientific proof, right? How can we do that? How can we find scientific proof on something that has yet to be scientifically proven? And what I'm saying is like, when we go out here and investigate as paranormal investigators and you, you know, lay a rim pod down and an EMF meter and, you know, maybe one of those cat toys and, you know, whatever tool you might be using. And you have naysayers go, well, that's not scientifically possible. Well, there's a lot in the scientific community itself that's not scientifically possible yet theoretic physics right yeah. so i mean I, I think you even find that though like even like when, uh, even if we're doing our cryptid research which uh, and cryptid research and paranormal research you can't have one without the other i've said that for years the other thing is uh usually when you've got one you've got the other but it is a different kind of uh strategy i think we can agree on that like when we go uh looking if we get a, a tip on a dog man report all right dog man's i I'm, I'm a firm believer that you and i we've both seen a dog man and, and i know they're corporeal i know they're here uh i don't think they they flip in and out of universes i think they're just something that's been here for a long time I, you know i've been on record saying that forever but the way we go about it is is different than the research we would do say if there's something paranormal now paranormal i agree with you sometimes i think this could be, a, you know, the veil gets real thin certain times of the year. I think if the multiverse is true, sometimes maybe those paranormal events are other uh, actual events from another, you know, realm of existence bleeding through. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is where it gets real difficult. When you see something in the woods, you know, like Bigfoot or Dogman or, you know, Cephalite, whatever you want to call it, you know, that's a different kind of research that's you know we just got to get that on camera we can get we can find tracks we can find this we can find hair we can find that we can get dna on that you can't do that with the paranormal with the paranormal you you literally have to have you know that that image right then and there and then the readings on the emf may be different or, mm -hmm. or but what we're doing theoretically is we're looking for patterns so yeah. we can find them again in the future 
So yeah. the, the patterns are definitely different when it comes to doing encrypted and paranormal research. Some of them, uh, you know, they branch off from the same family. Don't get me wrong. But they are quite different because, like I said, you know, when you're in the woods or is, uh, people, when I say we're in the woods, you know, Tiny and I always get asked, how, you know, do you guys really go that far out and blah, blah, blah. We, you don't have, I mean, what, here's here's an example. When the car radio does not work, hmm. uh, when the CB does not work, when your ham radio does not pick up a repeater, I'd say we're out there pretty far, wouldn't you? Yeah, we're out there a little ways. We're, we're out there a wee bit. And, uh, you know, that's how you do the research. But again, even with the paranormal, we could be in a house next door. And if we see the patterns that are continuing to look, you know, uh, familiar, mm -hmm. we know what we might get. Yeah. And it's the same thing with the paranormal or, or the same thing with cryptid. If we're in an area and we start seeing tree breaks or cliffs or things like that or how, you know, footprints and, you know, whatever. It's the same thing. We know what we're doing. But uh, they're very much different in the way you, you apply uh, the it, search. You know, the thing is we we... I think any investigator, I'm going to, I'm going to be generous and say any investigator out there tries to apply the scientific method. Exactly. And applying the scientific method is, is a little bit different than scientific proof. And just the nature of what we do, you know, unless maybe, you know, we discover Schleimer one day, <laughs> you know, get covered in ectoplasm or something like that for, the layman out here, we're probably never going to have that proof. It's a whole lot of fun finding it, trying to find it, things like that. But, you know, there's always going to be logical explanations, just like with the Mandela effect. There's going to be logical explanations for it. Um, what makes it illogical is the sheer scope, because you're not talking about, you know, me and you, Christian, remembering couple different things mm -hmm. we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people one set remembering one thing one set remember another and the mandela effect was actually named after nelson mandela you remember nelson mandela oh yeah yeah and you're a history teacher so a lot of these things are going to be interesting um to hear from you too well i'm looking forward to it so let's get started so you remember mr mandela Dying in the mm -hmm. 80s, right? Yes. What do you remember about his death? Uh, I remember they had a pretty big funeral for him. Come on. I was just, just talking you up as a history teacher. Come on, man. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, it depends. You know, there's two sides of looking at uh, Mandela. There's mm -hmm. those, there's the pro Mandela and then there's the. I'm not talking about that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're pro or against. Just what you remember, when he died, where he died. And oh, honestly, I, uh -huh. I, I think he didn't. He die in the nineties. Well, some people remember him very plainly dying while he was in prison. No, he didn't die. He, he got pardoned, and he went and he became a, and he got into politics, and he mm -hmm. won. And he died. In office, yeah. Um, he died in the eighties, and had a very big funeral. Right? right, not everybody remembers that. They remember him plainly dying in prison. No, he he got out of prison and then he was mm -hmm. in uh, a political office for quite a while and then he died. So why would so many people believe otherwise? I I, I again I don't know. That's why right. we call it the Mandela effect. I mean, so you like peanut butter? Right? Love peanut butter. All right. So here's one from the childhood. Yes. Did you ever eat uh, Jiffy peanut butter? Oh yeah. Of course. Yeah. Jiffy, right? Right. It was Jiffy, yeah. Skippy. Uh -huh. not, what was else? Was that not Peter Jiffy. Pan? I hate, I hate to hurt your feelings. It's not Jiffy. It was never Jiffy. What? It was Jiff. Jiff? Jiff. Just J-I-F-F. Now, are you serious? I'm serious. Now, this, of course, is just cursory research online, and this is a collection of people's memories, okay? I remember Jiffy, too. It had a blue label, didn't it? Jiffy. Mm -hmm. the, the, the word Jiffy was in blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. All right. So here's another from childhood. I know we both, we both grew up on Looney Tunes. Oh, yes. Bugs and Elmer and uh -huh. all them, right? And uh, it's kind of funny because one thing that comes to mind, I don't know if you remember the episode, but you know, uh, Foghorn Langhorn? Of course I do. You know, when he 
was uh, messing with the chicken hawk. Yes. And they were playing hide and seek. Right. And the chicken hawk done some real complicated equations. Yes. You know, and then walked over well away from where Foghorn was hiding in the uh, dumpster and dug him up out of the ground. And Foghorn looks at him, looks at where he was hiding, and he goes, I'm not going to look. I might just be in there. Remember that episode? I, I do not remember that one. I very fondly remember that episode because... I, I know, but I remember the chicken hawk. I love it because the chicken hawk was a yeah. wee little, you know... I remember it because my dad got really tickled at it. And that's not part of the Mandela effect. That was just a fond memory of mine that I'm throwing out there. But it kind of makes you think, were they telling us something? Because Looney Tunes, how do you remember the name being spelled? Uh, two O's. And two, was it two O's on each one? Because mm-hmm. it was like Looney and then Tunes, T O O. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Apparently it never was. What? It was spelled T U N E S. I thought the eyes were like the O's were like eyes. Mm-hmm. That's what I remember too. Oh, wow. Um, and honestly, Tunes doesn't, you know, T U N E S, like music, yeah. doesn't make a whole lot of sense. No. And there's a couple in here that make zero sense. Uh, how about Oscar Meyer? We both grew up on Bologna. I wish I was an Oscar Mayer wiener. Uh-huh. Really well How was Oscar Mayer spelled? My Bologna has a first name. Mm-hmm. It's O-S-E-A-R. Mm-hmm. My Bologna has a second name. It's M-A-Y-E-R. Mm-hmm. So, A-Y-E-R is apparently the correct way. I remember an E. Yeah. M-A-Y-E-R. Yeah. yeah. See, I plainly remember an E. Huh. Uh, That's another one that got me. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I remember E. Fruit Loops. That was fruit spelled. I got I, I, fruit. I, F-R-U-I-T. I don't know. That's the correct way. I remember two O's. Plainly because they're... Oh, that's right. Because two can't see him. Wasn't his eyes yep, the O's? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I remember yep. that. Apparently that never happened. What? Yep. Now, you grew up on Monopoly too, right? Of course I did. So did I. You remember the... Num- the mon- 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 I remember the Monopoly man. Yeah. And, you know, of course, from all of the McDonald's. Of uh, course. Yeah. I thought I won once. I got really excited. I oh, The only thing I've ever won, honestly, in that stupid game was I won a hash brown one time, yeah. like eight years ago. Yeah. And I, then they didn't even want to give it to me. They told me I had to come back next visit. Yeah. I, I thought I thought I, got, I won. I obviously did not win. But, anyway, the Monopoly man. Mon- monocle or no monocle? Definitely monocle. He had the monocle. Nope. No. What? Nope. No monocle? No monocle. They say that we remember the monocle because we're remembering the planter's peanut peanut. No. I, the, the monopoly guy was totally different. He had the monocle. Dude, I remember it hanging from his yep. eye. You know? That's part of his uh, you know, rich upbringing. Yeah. Every rich man has a monocle. Of course. We, you know, we know that. That's rich man are villains. Super villains and rich people all exactly. have monocles. Exactly. Uh, here's another one that gets me. Fruit of the Loom. Right. In the, the 80s, like, the ads, Fruit of the, the fruit, Loom. The guys are talking fruit. Right. But the um, the, the the picture, okay? Do you, How do you remember it? Do you remember just a bunch of fruit, or do you remember a bunch of fruit coming out of a horn of It penny? was a cornucopia. Yes. Never. Oh, man. That's not right. Apparently. I remember Cornucopia. Me too. Me too. So, you're a Star Wars fan. Of course. Nerds unite. C-3PO. Right. Did he have an abnormality? Do you remember? He had a different color arm. His one arm was like real brass. His own kind of like silver. Really? But then they changed it like at the end of the movie. So... Most people remember, you may be from an even third reality here. Dun, dun, dun. Most people remember him having a completely gold body. Well, most of it was gold, but he had that arm. So most people are saying that in actuality, he had a silver leg. I thought it was his arm. Was it a leg? Apparently. Oh, no, he did, because remember, he had, I think it was his left leg. The bottom was silver. I honestly do not remember, but I figured you would. That was an empire, remember, because that's when he got blown apart, and he was on the back of Chewie. Mm-hmm. 
I'm wondering if that's where they screwed that up. Maybe just Chewie grabbed the wrong section of leg. Maybe it was another protocol droid. Maybe. Who I mean, knows? Who knows? You know, the the used parts store is tricky. Well, remember, that's how we found him. We found him in the junk pile. He's getting, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So, uh, Ed McMahon. You remember Good old Ed. Man? Oh, yeah. You remember what he used to do? Yeah, he was the uh, sweepstakes guy, and then he was uh, the Tonight Show co-host. Did he ever hand anybody checks? Yeah, man, that's, that's, that, that was knocking on the door, giving people the publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes. That's what he used to Apparently, do. Apparently, that's not true. That what? No, I remember getting those mail. I remember getting his picture on the Apparently, mail. Apparently, the only thing that ever he was ever involved with is his picture was on the envelope. He never handed anybody checks. Okay, I can see that now. I remember him on TV handing people checks. I mean, I thought I did, but I, I clearly I could be, remember that one. I could be wrong with. I very clearly remember it because my aunt used to play all the time. Okay. Um, Casablanca. One of my favorite movies of all time. A movie I have never seen. I still can't believe you haven't seen that movie. I I haven't. Um, Ingrid uh, Bergman. Bergman. Mm -hmm. What was her line? Her big famous line? Well, that, that, the, if you're referring to the line about play it, Play it if he can hear it, or I can, or uh, play it against Sam. That was actually both of them kind of had that same kind of line. Line. Uh, Ingrid Bergman goes in to Rick's cafe, and she sees Sam, and she tells Sam to play it, and he says, "What are you talking about?" And she goes, "Play as time goes by," and he goes, "I don't remember that," and she goes, "I'll hum it for you," and then he starts to play it, and then after she leaves with her new husband, Rick shuts down the bar and he starts drinking heavily and he tells Sam to play it. And Rick, uh, Sam doesn't want to play it. And he goes, if, if she can handle it, I can handle it. So and then he plays it again. So it's, it's just play it, Sam. I don't think it was played against Sam. I think it was just so played Sam. according to popular opinion, people remember her saying, play it once, Sam, mm-hmm. for old time's sake. Now, I, she might have said that, play it, play it for old time's sake, but I don't think she said it played once. But according to whatever powers that be, that was never in the movie. No, that's in the movie. She tells him to play it. She, I mean, they are. that's because that's when Rick comes over and sees her because they haven't seen each other since Paris. Right. That's there. I mean, that's, that's how it helped because Rick hears Sam playing as time goes by, and that's when he comes storming in because he's all ticked off. Because he told Sam never to play that. Damn that! No, okay, that one's wow. That that's got to be one of like the main. Mister Vader. Yes, we all know Mister Vader. Mister DV. Mm-hmm. And I, I've seen so many reenactments of this next one that I just can't believe. I, I have a hard time with this one. Uh, Luke, finish it. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me you killed him. He told me enough. No, I am your father. So, one of the greatest scenes of all time. That is apparently the right way. Right. I remember, and I've seen so many reenactments. Luke, I am your father. Am I? Now, so wait a minute, which one's right? The one you're repeating is right. apparently right. I don't remember that. See, the only reason I remember it that way, and this is how I remember, is because there, there were smack. He was smack talking Obi Wan, mm-hmm. like he's, he's just he's just cut the guy's hand off, mm-hmm. and he tells him point blank that Obi Wan's been lying to him and the yada yada yada, yeah. and that's how I remember that. So maybe that's the only reason why I remember that the right way. So, but I know exactly what you're talking about because everyone else has always said. I remember even seeing Luke, I'm your father, t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So is it a different scene that everybody's remembering or uh, a different reality? It's, it's, I, you know, again, I don't know. I, it makes, there's so many things that I swear were true. Uh, and I don't know if you've got the Lord's prayer on that list, mm-hmm. but one of those is, no, you don't have that one. No. Apparently the Lord's prayer changed. It's interesting. Uh, which which I was surprised with. All right, what's next, Danny? Jaws. Jaws. Dun, 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 dun. The famous line. Somebody's going to need a bigger boat. 
How do you remember it? I remember Roy Scheider. He was chumming on the back, and he's he's got a cigarette, and his cigarette almost falls out of his mouth. He looks at Quint, and he goes, you're going to need a bigger boat. So, it's apparently we are going to need a bigger boat. Or no, I'm wrong. You're right. I remember we're going to need a bigger boat. But see, that makes more sense to say we're going to need a bigger boat. It does. They're all in the same boat. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to separate? I mean, like verbally, I think it would make more sense if he said we're all going to need a bigger boat. Maybe that's what people did. They corrected. They autocorrect in their head. Maybe that's a, that's a possibility because some things that I've seen just don't make sense. Like how it's phrased. I'm like that. No, they don't make sense. But you know, life uh, is like a box of chocolates. It is. You never know what you're going to get. Except that's not what was said. And I see, I don't really, I could have sworn I remember him sitting on the bench saying that. What did and he say? some, some of these things are just semantics, but semantics are important. Yeah. What he actually said apparently was life was like a box of chocolates. How is life was? That's a past tense. Life is. He's still alive. Exactly. Again, maybe the autocorrect kicked in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the Wicked Witch. Mm. What'd she say to the mirror? Oh, uh, from which one? The, the from Snow White or? Yeah. Oh, um, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Yep. Is that is that what she said? Apparently, mirror, mirror is not correct. It's magic mirror on the wall. Really? Mm -hmm. Now, I do not remember that, and. I watched a video of a girl after she saw that she went on a crusade and she dug up her fairy tale book from when she was a child. It was published in 1978, the year before I was born. And she looked it up three different places in that book said mirror, mirror on the wall. That's the way I've always heard. I, I don't think I've ever heard Magic Mirror on the wall. I don't think ever. Mm -hmm. Now, here's another one that I've seen many, many examples. And Family Guy keeps popping up in my head because they do everything. Yeah. And <clears throat> probably Simpsons, too. Simpsons probably told us about all this before it ever happened. Oh, yeah. Simpsons probably been doing the Mandela effect for years. Um, risky business. Mm -hmm. The famous scene where Tom Cruise slides in. Right. Any socks and underwear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was he wearing sunglasses or not? Yeah, he was wearing Bray Ban wafers. Nope. Hmm. I remember sunglasses. I remember sunglasses and that because he's seen old time rock and roll by Bob Seger. Yep. Everything that I've ever seen redone on it, sunglasses. I don't think I've ever not seen it with sunglasses. Mm hmm. Because doesn't he grab a candlestick stick holder and start singing to that? Uh, I thought it was a broom, but it could be. I don't. I, I don't. It's been very long. Uh, I haven't. You know what? I loved Rebecca De I never mm -hmm. knew what happened to her. She was like, she was like one of the the, the quintessential '80s women. I don't. You never know what happened to her. Yeah. So, uh, Silence of the Lambs. Yes, Clarice. One famous line. You know the one I'm talking about? I don't even have to say. What is it? Which one? I mean, there's so many of them. <laughs> I mean, hello, Clarice. Hello, Clarice. You remember that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, he never said it. What? Apparently, it was good morning, Clarice. No, I remember. I could swear I remember him saying hello, Clarice. Mm -hmm. I've heard it redone on so many things. God, was it was it good morning? Really? No, was it? It was hello. In my timeline, it was hello. I remember hello. Hello, Clarice. Because he had that such a creepy voice with it. Yeah. Dr. Lecter. Mr. Rogers. Ah, oh, Fred. I loved him. Yeah. Nice. He was a treasure. Him. He was awesome. The world needs another Fred Rogers. It, it hurts my feelings that he's on this list. Oh, not Fab Five Freddy. No. Yeah. Not, not Fred Rogers. Yeah. So you remember the theme, it's the, the theme song, right? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful day. Yeah. He wrote that. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it wasn't the neighborhood. It was this neighborhood. No, no, no. I refuse mm. to back down. That mm -hmm. one. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Not this neighborhood. Yep. No, that doesn't sound right. Exactly. I remember the 
Too. The neighborhood. Yep. Won't you be my? You know, that yep. guy was groundbreaking. A lot of people, there was a documentary on him. Mm-hmm. I think it's called The Real Mr. Rogers, something mm-hmm. like that. And his wife's on there. Mm-hmm. And, his kid. and he was a true badass, too. He was honestly in the night, but he was like so far advanced. Like he was, you know, there's there's people on there talking about how like he gave him the first shot and he mm-hmm. was helping out gay people. And, mm-hmm. you know, they was told not to. And he said, God wants me to help everyone. Everyone's equal. Like yeah. he did so much stuff. People have no idea. Yeah. He was just a great guy. Yeah. And he did most of it quietly. He did, he was and he didn't look for credit either. Yeah. He's, he he was a very spiritual guy. And he was like, you know, God put me here to help people. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. There's uh when they're they're interviewing the mailman, I can't remember the mailman's got name, but the mailman just like kind of breaks down. I mean, he's been you know mm-hmm. off the show's been off for years, and he just breaks down and said, you know, if it weren't for Fred, I wouldn't be here. You know, and he's just, yeah. so many people he helped. I think Michael Keaton, uh, Batman. I think his first job, like in in television, was working on that set. I remember seeing that. I could be wrong on that. I don't think I am. I can believe it. So, I love Lucy. Yes. I grew up on Lucy. Never been a big fan. Well, I grew up on Lucy. But, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, her husband would always say, Ricky, he'd always say, after she got in trouble, Lucy, you got some explaining to do. Right. Right? You remember that? Yeah, because he was Cuban. Yeah. It's kind of racist. Yeah. Well... Never happened. Apparently, what he actually said was, "Explain that if you can." What? That don't even make sense, does it? No. Don't sound right. Don't make sense. I swear, I've heard Lucy you got some explaining to mm-hmm. do. I heard uh, actually, I heard uh, Eddie Murphy in one of his stand-ups, uh, probably back in the early nineties, eighties, done a bit on that, and he actually repeated. You got some explaining to do. Maybe that's I. You know what? But that's again. I was never a big fan of it. And the only time that was ever on when I was a kid was like late, 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 late night. You know, mm-hmm. I never, I never really watched it. Now here's one that I feel like is particularly good for you since you're a history teacher. Yes. And apparently there's some controversy on this that some people were taught that they were that there were 51 or 52 states. Well, they were taught wrong. (laughs) So I remember something in school. I don't remember because I didn't really pay a lot of attention. I'll be honest. No. Yeah. That um, there were 50 states, but they added, I want to say, it was Alaska or some one of the... Alaska and Hawaii were the two last to be added. and I was like... 48 and 50. Yeah. And I remember I remember them saying that it made actually 51 states, even though they didn't recognize it on the flag. No, I mean, I, well, uh, see, here's the other thing. A lot of people already incorporate Puerto Rico. Like, people think Puerto Rico is one of our states, and it's not. And course. maybe that's what it is. And But it's just, well, they get the same, you know, they have voting and all that over there. And realistically, in my opinion, it probably should be. But uh, there's only 50 states. And that that only happened. I, I believe I honestly said Alaska was either forty eight or forty nine, and I I don't remember enough to argue about that one because right. I just I don't I don't know. It, I feel like I have a vague recollection of something, but that's about it. Um, you remember Sinbad, right? Oh yeah. You ever watch that movie Shazam where he was a genie? Uh, no. Really? Yeah. Because I did. But apparently, it uh, never happened. I don't remember that one. I very plainly remember that. And if you think about it on Family Guy, they did an episode where Jeff's in space with the ghost of Sinbad and he's dressed as a genie. That wasn't Family Guy. That was that was uh, American Dad. American Dad. Yes. And you're right. That is true. Because that was hilarious. That was hilarious. Mm-hmm. One. That, so, that's when Wax Fang. That's one of my favorite songs by Wax Fang. Mm-hmm. Majestic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? Just to back up real quick here, I did this January third, nineteen fifty nine. That's when Alaska became the last. Uh, is that the fiftieth state, the forty ninth state? So realistically, it was the forty ninth state, and then Hawaii follows soon after. So we didn't even have all fifty states uh, till fifty nine, or is that sixty? So I can see where that would be an issue on some people. Yeah. Um. 
That one, that one was Sinbad. That one gets me though. That was hilarious because that I, whole part, yeah, that yeah, was hilarious. I remember watching that movie. I, I've never, sh- I've never they, seen it. They say that everybody's getting it confused with uh, the movie Kazam. Kazam with Shaq, yeah. <laughs> but that's just not true. You know, Shaq's one of those guys. Speaking of Shaq, I just want to hang out with Shaq one day. Yeah, Shaq he, just seems like he's just the coolest guy in the world. Yeah, I mean, he's just he's comfortable with where he is in the world. Like he doesn't, uh, you know, he's he's just he just seems like a cool guy. I like the way his he talks about you know how his kids if they want you know uh, uh, money he, they have to get education. Yeah, like I mean, he's just he just seems like he'd be like a cool dad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, just I, he just seems like the coolest guy in the world. I mean, I don't know. I just like I said, I've never been a big basketball guy. I, I mean, I was aware of Shaq. I lived in Florida. He's playing for Orlando. You know. Uh, but, uh, you know, I was always a Celtic guy, Yeah. but, uh, Shaq just seems to me, he'd be cool as hell to hang out with. Like he's the kind of guy to be like, Hey man, yeah, let's go to Europe for an hour. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's go fly to St. Louis for lunch or something like yeah. that. Yeah. He man, just seemed I, like he'd be fun. I know this great restaurant in like <laughs> 12 countries over. Let's, yeah. Let's go. It just seems like he'd be cool to hang out with. Sally Field. Yes, the bandit. Bandit ass. Remember when she got her Oscar? And what God, she said? Was that for Norma Jean? I don't remember what it was for, but you like you me. You like me. You truly, truly like me. You really, really like me. Something like yes, that. Yeah. That's not what she said. What did she say? You really, really like me, right? Now listen to this. Listen to this. This hurts my head. This hurts my head. What? I can't deny the fact that you like me right now. What? I could swear she goes, you really, really like me. Yeah. And I've seen that repeated on many, many I don't, And that was, shows. that we, I mean, we must have been kids when that happened. Like mm-hmm. kids, kids. Yeah. Because I just remember like maybe spoofs or something like that on that. Because yeah. I don't even remember the whole thing. Because I, I, I don't, was it for Norma Ray? I don't even know. Don't We'd know. have to look that up. But it's, it, that line is, is incredibly famous. But apparently it was never said. I still think her best movie was Smoking the Bandit one. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Speaking of Smokey. Smokey. The bear. Yes. You remember Smokey the bear? Yeah, Smokey the bear. Mm-hmm. Don't apparently, call us forest fires. Apparently there was never any the in the name. How was it? Smokey bear? Yep. That's stupid. When did Neil Armstrong die? Recently. 2012. What? Is Buzz Aldrin? Am I thinking of Buzz Aldrin? Maybe. See, I don't know. I don't know enough about him, but apparently there's real. Uh, dis- uh, dis- now, Buzz is the UFO. Buzz is the UFO guy. I don't know if Neil ever came out and started talking about UFOs, mm-hmm. but Buzz, point blank, Doctor Buzz Aldrin, he's a. Is he still alive? I don't know. I don't know, but apparently there's some real discrepancy with that too. Um, Billy Graham, when he die? Oh man, Billy! He, he and we should know because you know. Yeah, I mean, we're right down the street from the Billy Graham mm-hmm. University. I remember when he died. I remember the funeral present because I lived. It wasn't right that there. long. It was a couple of years ago. Yeah, I, I used to live right there from. Yeah, right down from the, the coast. Like I remember everything getting shut, but I don't remember what year it was. That was a couple of years ago, man. So it was apparently in 2018. Yeah, and there's a lot of discrepancy about that too. I think the reason for that is because his son. Mm-hmm. Took over, yeah, and it's such a big name still, yeah, yeah. And it's let's face it, I mean, we're we're in North Carolina. I mean, that's that, that's his that's his territory. So I mean, mother, I mean, uh, there's the Billy Graham. Dri- I mean, we we drive the Billy Graham yeah. highway every yeah. day. Yeah, Mother Teresa. Oh, do you remember when she was sainted? No, I don't think she's been. Has she been sainted yet? She has. I did not know that. Saint Teresa, really? No, no kidding. There's mm-hmm. a yeah, and apparently that happened. After she died in 2016. That's awful quick to get her cantonized and all that. Well, most people think that it happened in the 90s no. when she was still alive. So Pope Francis is saying he's saying to her? I huh. guess. Like a boss. And this one is one that uh, you should know. Yeah. I think, and I feel bad because I don't know. Yes. The Challenger Explosion. 86. 86 right. January 28th right a lot of people think that it was actually in 84 or 85 no it was 86 um 
Now here's one. This is the last one I've got on the list. All although right. there's tons and tons and tons and tons more out there. But this is the last one I got on the list, and I thought this would be a fun one to end it on. Okay. The Lindbergh baby. Yes, Charles Lindbergh. Big conspiracy, right? Huge. Never Cold. solved. Never solved. Or was it? Well, some people remember it being a cold case, never being solved. I remember it was a big conspiracy because, you know, they thought that it was somebody close to the family. Well, blah, Lindbergh blah, blah, had blah. Nazi ties and all that, mm-hmm. allegedly Nazi ties, I guess. I so, remember. apparently, it was solved and the suspect was put to death. What? When was this? Oh, the ladder. Didn't they find something with the ladder? There was a ladder to the kid's bedroom. Mm-hmm. I didn't think they saw. I didn't think that guy. I remember it. I, I've and admittedly, I've not looked into it. No, I haven't looked into it. I just thought it was unsolved. I remember it being a cold case. I remember it being a big conspiracy. I remember watching documentaries. I remember seeing an unsolved mysteries. Yes. Good old unsolved mysteries. God, I love that show. I'm, you know, it's back on Netflix. Is it? I love that show. Nice. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm very surprised with that. Well, you know, I think what this tells us is, you know, people remember things differently. Alternate timelines, string theory, possible universe. We don't know. I, I Again, I, I think what we need to do is I would love to have a guest on that's like an expert on CERN. Mm-hmm. I would love to. Because how nice would it be to actually know what they're really doing? Because they can tell. We'll never know. I mean, you, know, you start hearing about dark matter or punching holes in the universe yeah. and the well, fabric of time. That's scary stuff. So think about this. Well, first of all, I'll start with this thought. First of all, most people believe that the internet has honestly been the beginning of the downfall of humanity. I can't argue with that. And it has in a lot of ways. And it's getting worse, especially, you know, with the whole metaverse coming in and shit like that. But... With the Mandela effect, or the quote unquote they them those mm-hmm. using the internet to mess with their minds, it's possible. Is it a glitch in the matrix? It, I mean, ain't it, it, yeah, so many possibilities. Um, but like I said, we we know that they just fired CERN up again. Like I think it was last month, and Hawaii's. Most active volcano just started erupting like a week ago. Mm-hmm. We had an earthquake here. Yeah, woke me up. Um, ten twenty three p.m. on uh, Friday. Yeah, it's uh, or Thursday night. What was it? A two, two point seven. So weird things, and all of the weird things that are happening are so overshadowed by. All of the uh, nonsense that we're being fed See, constantly. See, that is such a good point. There is, you know what's funny, Tiny? I was just watching, uh, there was this, you know how you get these little videos on Instagram and it's just you flip through and mm-hmm. every once in a while you look at one that's yeah. interesting. There's this guy that was, I can't think of his name. He he was he was in the, he had whatever Q level clearance is. I, I guess that's pretty high. Yeah. I always thought the highest was cosmic. I don't know how they do it anymore. Yeah. But that's just a... But he starts talking about how uh, he's definitely an Illuminati guy. Mm-hmm. He starts talking about how eight men and women that basically control the planet can get together in Germany and no one knows anything about it. But the second six football players go have dinner together, it's it's everywhere. And I, you know, it's an older, it's obviously an older uh, video. I mean, just from the look, it's from from late eighties. But it made sense because that's exactly what we're doing. Because he talks about in another video clip how the reason why they do that it's just it's nothing but the roman circus Mm -hmm. when people start disagreeing with things when people start questioning reality itself when people start questioning the government when people look too much into things the first things that happens the powers that be they throw the big circus it's look over here don't look at what we're doing over here it's the switcheroo and that to me is exactly what's going on with this mandela effect i just think it was kind of funny how we started looking at that and then you know discussing it because it's it's so appropriate uh, for what we're discussing, and it's just so strange that you know 
especially around this time of year, you know, this is the time of year we're supposed to be peace, love, brotherhood, things like that. I, to me, it doesn't feel like Christmas. I haven't, and maybe I'm just a Grinch. I, uh, you know, I'm being honest with you. I don't have any Christmas spirit. I, I, you know, I don't really know anyone that does. It hadn't felt like Christmas in years. Yeah. I mean, it's, maybe that's just the, you know, that dissipates uh, when you're a kid or maybe it's the fact that you and I spend most of our spare time delving into things that most people don't want to even think about. And it just, maybe it's hard in us. I, I mean, I honestly don't know. I, yeah. I can't answer it, but I just, to me, it doesn't feel like anything. Uh, I don't hang up decorations. I don't do, I mean, I do you, I mean, no, no. And I, I mean, there's, I don't feel like there's really a point, you know, yeah. it just being me, my dogs don't care. Yeah. I mean, you know, but it, it's, it's one of those things like as a society, we're becoming so completely self-absorbed, mm -hmm. you know, family values are going out the window meaningful things like like family and so many other things friendships you know pride in your work pride in your hobbies all of that's just going out the window because of the desire for immediate gratification mm -hmm. and you know we're being we're being taught that you know, everybody's special. Everybody's, you know, deserving of right. everything. And no matter what you do or what you put out and it it's causing it's causing a rift. A very, very, very big rift. And not to say that, you know, everybody's not special, but you also earn what you receive, whether that's good or bad. Call that the law of attraction if you want to get woo-woo with it. What you put out, you bring back. Right? Mm -hmm. Karma. You know, any any kind of any kind of names you can put to it, it's out there. And you know, I've talked before about feeling like something's coming. Yeah. Like there's a big change that's gonna gonna shift perspective completely. Maybe the Mandela effect and us actually shift in realities maybe that's part of it maybe it's not maybe it's just our consciousness shifting maybe it's you know it could be a lot of things but if even if you're a religious person i would think that as a society and I, you know, not just here in this country, but as a, I say as a society, I think of a world society. Right. God's probably getting kind of fed up with us. Well, uh, and it's well, about time for spanking. I mean, honestly, you know, I hate sounding negative, but we kind of deserve what we get. Yeah. I mean, you know, but that's, that's humanity. Look at the way we treat each other and look at the way we treat the planet. Yeah. And the, but, you it, know, and then now we've got, Space travel is next. Mm -hmm. Like we need to be out there doing, you know, this on a global, you know, well, a, a planetary issue. We're working on that. Yeah. And I mean, I can't remember. It was several months ago and I can't remember if it was China or Japan, but it was one of them. They just fired up a miniature sun successfully. See, that's terrifying. What, what you know, that's an energy source. You can't even, that's uh, like, I don't know, man. Uh, it There's, makes me wonder what what are they really what do they really technology wise what do we really have like when Uncle Donald uh, created the space force that just to me that's still a huge question mark hanging over and it's not do we need it I think we do simply because that's the next step in, in evolution and and of course we're explorers by nature and we travel and that's what you know that's how humanity you know is, has been and that's what we do. I mean, since the days of the Vikings. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. kind of inbred in our DNA. That's what we do. We explore and, you know, we look for stuff. But what kind of tech do we really have for them to allocate a budget for something like that? And that, that kind of boils that down, too. It's like, and did that super advanced jump, if we have that tech, take place because we skipped realities or because we jumped a timeline? I mean, did, did, were we so advanced in one timeline that we just popped over and... All of a sudden, hey, wait a minute, where'd all this come from? Yeah. I mean, that's a possibility too. I don't know. 
I mean, do what kind of tech do we really have? I mean, that's what I always wanted to know. I mean, and you know, is to dig a little bit deeper and just slightly off topic, I guess, you know, there's been quote unquote evidence of time travelers for a long mm-hmm. time. Yeah. And you're seeing these pictures all over the yes. place. iPhones now, and, in the thirties. And granted, you know, Photoshop's a thing. Of course. And you know, it's near impossible to trust pictures and videos anymore because well, how they can Obviously, fake DNA. They can yeah. fake a picture. But you've got to think, you know, of the possibility. And you've kind of got to put two and two together. Maybe it's real, maybe it's not. It doesn't matter. But you kind of got to think about it. There's nothing we could do about it if it was or what. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. But you see pictures of technology, you know. I, what was it I read a little while back? They found a um basically a fossilized cell phone that was like a couple million years old or something like that um god i can't remember where that was but yeah like stupid stuff just like stuff if there's been time travelers then that could be what's shifting not cern yeah, I mean, that's true, too, because if you shift the timeline, like if someone mm-hmm. starts, you know, if you and I get sucked in a vortex and we go back a thousand years mm-hmm. and we get back here and, you know, we give them the, oh, by the way, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. We've just changed history to the point where no one's ever going to know it changed. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem. You don't know what's going to happen. That's that's why, you know, you hear about that butterfly flag. You change that one little thing. That's why I think time travel, if, if that ever happens, that's going to be such a quintessential weapon. I mean, because all you got to do, you know, you, you know, you want to change the world. You go back three generations, and you, you, you either kidnap or you take someone's ancestor out of the equation, and boom, they're never around. Yeah, I mean, that's how simple that is. I mean, you know, and it's scary when you think about it. There's a lot scary. I mean, that's that's entire. I mean, you can change everything. You know, I mean, it's. I was I was I was talking about this in my class. You know, the Nazis were less than a month away of developing the nuclear bomb, according to some sources. Now, that's alleged. I, you know, I wasn't there. I don't know. I believe it because they were so far advanced in their tech. And then, of course, you have Operation Paperclip and all that. But had the timeline changed, I mean, think about it, a month. Yeah. They would have had, and their V-2 rockets were capable of, of cruising over the Atlantic. Mm-hmm. So they could have bombed New York and D.C., and none of us would be here right now and we'd all be speaking German. Yeah. It's all it would have been as a month. So if someone would change that timeline or accelerate that, think about that. The entire planet's different now. And, you know, you talk about the tech that we have, and I don't know where it came from, but the general rule of thumb is we're, what, 25 years more advanced than what the general public knows? I, I was always I was always told 50 more years. The military's 50 years more advanced than what we'll ever see. The thing is, they're probably more than that. And oh, yeah. we don't know and we shouldn't know. Well, I, again, and, and honestly, people that think, hey, we should have full disclosure and all that, really, do you really want to know? Well, you're not going to sleep at night if you know the truth. Well, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, too. If I found out that we had some incredible tech, and of course it's going to be militarized because we're humans and that's Mm -hmm. the way we do. And I found out and I told you and you're like, holy crap. And you told somebody else, and it's going to snowball. And it's going to wind up going to somebody that don't need to hear it. It's going to wind up to our enemies. And then what? Exactly. They're going to look for it. Or they're going to be accusing us of having it. or You know, then that's how you start. Because when someone gets, you know, uh, angry enough, they're going to go to the UN or say, and say, hey, if you really have this tech, you need to share it with us. And if you don't, we're going to nuke you. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's how it would be. Honestly, I mean, because, you know, everyone's a spoiled sport these days. Yeah. You know, instead of finding their own way, they expect us to do everything for them. I I can see why they keep stuff a secret. Uh, but, you know, you and I have been, always been on the same mind. If, even if you and I had definitive proof of Bigfoot that was irrefutable, irrefutable, we've always said we'd never release it. Yeah. Simply because, one, the world's not ready for it. And two, there's a reason why it's not released now. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, the... I believe, and I know this sounds really woo-woo, new agey, whatever you want to call it, but I believe that we are, as a, a human race, I believe we are evolving. I believe we're ascending. 
And I believe we're on the, the cusp of a large ascension. But if you think about it, and I know this is like got a lot of sci-fi roots and stuff like that, but as a race, we're babies. Mm. We're babies. Yeah. We're not ready for a lot of the stuff that we think we are. We could not handle it. Well, actually, I now hold on. Let me let me preface it. I think a portion of the population could handle it. I think people Very that small are small portion. I think people that are peaceful by nature, that are true explorers. And I'm just going to say, I think you and I could, whatever we, whatever they have, we could see it, and we would not, I think it would blow our minds, but we're not going to be thinking global domination. I think we're probably thinking, wow. I ain't got the energy for that. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. I don't have time either. But I, I think if you could grab people that are like-minded yeah. and say, okay, here's what we really have, it would probably just kind of be like the ultimate, wow. All right, so that feeds right into one thing that I've noticed. And it's, you know, maybe it's a small scale, but I've noticed that a lot of like-minded people are moving together, are just naturally kind of flowing together into these groups. And it, it started a long time back. You start talking about, uh, oh God, the Indigo Babies. You remember those? Um, they were... Super brilliant children oh, that were just, man. yeah, just evolved. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been, you know, reports of other children that have been more evolved than they ever should have been. You know, things like, I think that there are people here that are here waiting. Because when the big thing happens, there's going to need to be people that can guide. No, I mean, I agree with that. Cause you always, you know, you always have to have someone that keeps calm head, but the truth of the matter is, you know, whether or not there's a big thing happening or not, uh, I think we can all agree that it, nothing feels right anymore. The world doesn't feel like it should. No, you know, and I agree with you. I think something, something big's happening. going to happen. Or I think the veil is so thin. I think it's like, there's either going to be a huge announcement or something's going to just come to fruition or, uh, we could wake up tomorrow and there's a UFO floating over the White House and boom, there's full disclosure on everything. It's it feels like that one of those things. It's just but nothing feels uh, productive or uh, not productive. It's not the word I'm looking for. Nothing feels um, natural. It's like there's something wrong that we just don't know. It's like feels that like impending a, doom waiting. Yeah, it feels like we're in a kind of a state of static unrest exactly and you know and i've been feeling that way for a long time and i'm honest about it i i don't feel like things are 100 percent normal uh i don't really know anyone that does yeah you know and i don't know if that's just paranoia from living in modern society or maybe it's just the the radio waves from the internet i i mean i don't know i you know but it's just i don't i haven't felt normal as far as like everything's fine and the world is a safe place for a decade yeah maybe longer you know, because it's not. It, everything's kind of messed up. Even to this day, things are still screwed up. Yeah. I mean, you know, I I don't really think it matters who's in office either. No. Nah. I, I you know, it's it's what's going to be is going to be. So I mean, you can't blame it on political affiliations. It's just it is what it is. It's, yeah, it's it's bigger than that. Yeah, it is. That's what it is. It's bigger than that. It's like global scale. Yeah. It's not just a, a you know local city country thing. It's it's global, and you know, I mean, we just reached what. Eight billion people, yeah. Eight billion people on this planet now. I mean, that's that's crazy. Uh, who who would have thought? I remember what it was for. <laughs> and that was a lot. Yeah, that was a lot then. Now we doubled it. Anyway, uh, you know what, Tiny? This has been an awesome show. I'm glad uh, we we started recording again. I guess I'm up, and I appreciate it. And for those of you who are listening, uh, we are very very grateful to have you and please if you feel the need to contact us all our contact info is below you can get us at american cryptid and paranormal society.com uh you can get me at cryptoguy.com uh you can get christian at cryptid guy you can get tiny uh is you still have the hearst yes which, which one do you want to use it's um uh, hearst paranormal at gmail hearst paranormal at gmail.com or you can call us at any time at 1-800-329-4851 
Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. And everyone, have a Merry Christmas. Take care. I'm the Cryptic Guy, and with me as always is Tiny.